Hi, I'm Imogen Lamport from 16 Style Types. And I'm Jill Chivers from 16 Style Types. And in this video, we're going to talk about a situation that's probably very, very common, which is when your personality and dressing style is a little bit out of step with your environment, where there's a bit of incongruency between uh, how you like to dress and present yourself and the environment that you find yourself in, either from a personal perspective or sometimes more importantly from a work perspective and we've got been asked this really interesting question that has some specific elements to it but there are some very broad and universal uh, principles that are at play here. So we've been asked you know if I don't want to stand out for the wrong reasons mm. and I have a more creative dressing style yeah how do I then still fit in with the group spirit, with the group? Yes. So whether it's a social group or it could be a work group, it doesn't really matter what sort. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some different things there that if it's a work group and there is a certain dress code, mm. that's actually quite different from going out socially where there is, you know, there's no externally imposed dress code in the same way. Yes. So if you were to say, if it is a work situation, mm. then it's going, okay, well, if this is the externally imposed dress code, how do I fit my personal, my, my style around that? And it can be going, well, if I need to wear a certain sort of, you know, more conservative outfit and mm. I like quirky and different, mm. can I find uh, a blouse that's got an interesting pattern or an unusual piece of construction? Can I add some interesting jewellery? Can mm. I make sure that my jackets are not straight classic blazers, but I have really interesting construction or like something like that? Yes. That you go, I'm still in, I'm in a jacket, I'm in a, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the corporate, mm. but I'm not losing my personality. Yes, I've borrowed enough from the more traditional sort of classic expected um, styles of dressing yeah. so that I fit within those parameters even if I'm close to the fringes yes. of those or I've introduced other elements to what I'm wearing so that for me it has that element of originality or, or it's interesting and a, and a bit creative. I mean one of my clients tells me how she likes to wear the scarf it's got this really tiny very hard to see but skull motif right. and so she said nobody ever notices that it's actually skulls right. but it makes her feel authentic to herself. Yeah. There's this little bit of rebel mm. that she's expressing without it being obvious. So yeah. sometimes it's just finding those little things. So that would be, and it's kind of start easier in some ways when it's ex externally imposed mm. um, uh, thing to go, well, this is the set of rules. I've got a specific set of rules yes. to work within because mm. now I can, you know, tweak them. Yeah. It can be a little bit harder sometimes, I think, when it's social, when there's kind of an expected norm, but mm. there is no set of rules. And I think the way that this question was put to us about, I don't want to stand out for the wrong reasons. And for me, I find that a very interesting uh, turn of phrase. Uh, I, I would imagine that standing out for the right reasons is therefore okay. And, and that would lead me into a bit of a discovery around what standing out means, what the right reasons are, what the wrong reasons are. And of course, they're interesting things for us all to think about in terms of if we are the center of attentional standing out in some way what makes that okay and and when is that not okay and if you're in a social gathering and you're standing out for the wrong reasons why is that wrong is it about feeling a disconnection with that group is it about taking attention away from other people when it really is about group spirit or togetherness and so how do you then translate that into your outfit and for me part of the answer is understanding um, I guess what the parameters are, the, the, the group norms in terms of dressing and borrowing again from those elements so that there's enough of them that there's a blending in quality but there's always something you keep in reserve for yourself. And I think too that one of the things to remember that is we pick inauthenticity very easily. Yes. So if you try and dress in a way that is not true to yourself, yes. um, that Often what happens is the people know you go, it's at odds, it doesn't mm. seem right, it doesn't feel right. Mm. Versus as long as you've got some element or detail that's still within your personality, yeah. that even if it's less quirky than you might go if that wasn't part of it, it's still got your little edge of quirk or your little bit of difference. So, so I think it's always remaining true to yourself. I'll always remember mm. one of the photos I saw when um, Madonna, we're talking a long time ago, back in the early 90s, when Madonna released her English Roses children's book. Oh. Um, she wore this beautiful 
white shift Prada dress covered in blue roses and matching blue rose satin pumps. Wow. Now this was Madonna of the sex books and the bondage gear and the... <laughs> And I was just going to mm -hmm. And to me, I understood. She was, I'm a children's author. I have to dress conservatively and I have to fit in. But it was raw. And she had her hair smoothed back into a little chignon. And like mm. everything about it was wrong for Madonna. Yeah. Um, so I kind of thought it's so at odds with what I think her, of her personality based on everything I've seen up to this point. Yes. Mm. And so it was an interesting thing where I went, yeah, she's really tried to, but, but she could have easily just dressed in something that was more conservative, but it didn't have to be this very prim pop. I mean, it was Stepford wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was that sort of thing that I remember thinking, you know, it shocked me. Yes. So she stood out for the wrong reason yes. rather than the right reason. And that's a really interesting point about authenticity and other people picking up on it. Now, this is not to say you need to dress in a uniform every single day, otherwise people will think you're inauthentic. In fact, there are a few of the style types who excel at chameleon likeness when it comes to their style. And that becomes part of what we know them for and when they're at their most stylish best, they are adaptable and resourceful and chameleon like. Um, and so this is this is not to say that this is a one size no. fits all in any fact that's one of the reasons we created 16 style types was to say there are 16 style pathways and they're all yeah. quite different from and one another. And in many ways Madonna has been a chameleon. She has. Like, she's, very adaptable. She's that's very, sure. very adaptable. She's been Eva Peron, she's been sex, she's been, yeah. you know, like you think about it, she's been, you know, holiday and then, you know, definitely yeah. seeking, like you think about, she's evolved. Yes. But this just, it felt... Yes outside of everything else yes it was beyond her normal adaptableness and she was wearing a costume trying to be somebody that she wasn't and we do pick up on that and when you get your style type report on page five one of the things we go through and the reason it's so upfront in your report is we give you your four style pillars which are about a traveling your own authentic style journey now they're all for your style type and you as an individual woman need to adapt them for yourself but uh, this is where I think we can become a little bit lost is when we try and travel a style pathway that somebody else is traveling so if we have a great need for stability and consistency in our style and we look at a Madonna who's highly adaptive if you ask me I think she's probably an ESTP um, and that just doesn't work for us Yes. Or we, we see somebody who has a very creative, quirky, original, eclectic kind of style and we think, well, that's how style is done. But that doesn't work for who we are. And so defining your own style pathway, I think, is about becoming your most stylish self. And in this kind of environment, you know, that's a question we've been asked about, not standing out for the wrong reasons, to make sure you get enough of yourself yes. into that um, situation so that you still feel true to yourself. Yeah. So it could be even things like going, I'm going to have a base of something a bit more classic, but I'm going to add my bit of quirk. Yeah. So, you know, so it, not everything, it's not head to toe. Yes. It, but there's enough of it there that makes you feel comfortable. And the thing is, because if you're saying I'm worried about standing out for the wrong reasons, it could be but also um, that some introverts don't like standing out at all. Yes. So there are some people who just, they don't want to stand out. Yes. And so therefore it's the, there is that feeling that there is a, a want to blend in. Mm. Um, and so therefore there might be a bit more changeableness in, in different situations being appropriate. Mm. But there's other introverts who are quite happy to go, I'm just going to go with my values and my integrity mm. and this is my personality and this is more authentic to me and I don't care what anybody else thinks. So, yeah. you know, there's no one right answer. Sorry, we can't give it to you. But that whole idea of, uh, you know, what situations do you find yourself in where there may be um, some, you know, uh, misalignment between your personality and your dressing style and the environments that you find yourself in. Most of us these days have multiple environments in which we have to make work yes. um, for ourselves and, and one particular way of presenting yourself and, and one personality approach to that often doesn't fit. We, we all have to adapt in yeah. some way. So it's an interesting thing to think about is what strategies do you employ when you're in those situations that require a stretch or where you become aware uh, and maybe that's part of it, is just lifting levels of awareness about what situations might I, I need to do some alignment or some further work to, to get into step with those environments. 
or is it more about claiming more of who you are and letting that incongruence stand? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's you know, many different ways of looking at it. Because often you might think, I'm going to stand out, but maybe all your, if you're, especially if you're a friendship group, they go, that's just how, you know, that's June, just you. That's how you, that's how June always dresses or, yes. you know, yes. so it's, it's, it's actually, you're not standing out because that's just you. Yeah. And in fact, you possibly stand out more if you stopped dressing in such, you know, whimsical or artistic or whatever it is like. Yeah. Mm. So hopefully that's helped you just have a think about that. And I would give given you no, you know, exact solutions but that's why there are 16 pathways and mm. different ways of doing it because there is no one right way absolutely